Radio. Hello and welcome to Cryptocurrent, the only podcast to bring you beginner and advanced knowledge of cryptocurrency and blockchain, analyses of cryptocurrency markets, and discussions on growing a business within the crypto space. Stay tuned and stay Cryptocurrent. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Cryptocurrent. Your host here, Richard Carthon. And today I got a special guest all the way from Ireland. I'm so excited to learn so much from this guest. Uh, he's been in marketing. He's been especially in the, the marketing side of cryptocurrency and blockchain and has been making a lot of waves on the international level. So without further ado, uh, Jamie McCormick, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me on. Of course, I'm from, from Ireland. <laughs> oh man, I'm, I'm so excited to learn more about your company and just like all kinds of neat tricks that you've been able to learn through the years. And just, you know, I know it's very late over there, so I appreciate you taking the time. But um, go ahead. Uh, can you give us a little bit of background about yourself and just tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure I can. So uh, I set up Bitcoin Marketing Team. We just turned five there in August. So Congratulations. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's been an interesting ride over the years. I mean, we've had the ups and the downs and follows the market price and all that. But uh, yeah, prior to that, I worked in the online video games industry for about 12 years. Um, so I kind of worked in development. Well, I do marketing or PR in uh, developers, middleware companies. So I worked for Demonware, which is uh, anyone who's played Call of Duty. Yes. Um, the technology that goes behind all of the online play for that. Wow. Uh, yeah, that was an interesting time, those early days. Uh, I was quite lucky to be operations manager of the first Xbox Live Gaming Center in Europe. Wow. Which is basically <laughs> like a big, you know, land center, leather seats, 32-inch screens, and 40 Xboxes. So that was good fun. Um, and then I kind of learned most of my digital marketing in a Japanese uh, free-to-play video games publisher. So we were working with um, virtual currencies, not necessarily cryptocurrencies there. Right. Um, so Really, after that, uh, kind of dabbled in a few different things, but then, you know, kind of looking at what my career direction was going to be. And, uh, you know, I'd been kind of mining since about 2012, kind of learning about that. And uh, I just figured, right, well, there's an opportunity here for, you know, marketing and crypto space. I saw a lot of parallels between, you know, launching a crypto product and launching uh, a video games project. And that's kind of panned itself out. They're about 80 the same. Right. And um, yeah, so, so. But, but before before diving into that, so like, okay, so you're telling me, uh, you know, you started off in the marketing side and like, wow, just an amazing, fun background with being able to be a part of the first, you know, Xbox Live group and being able to just market in all kinds of really fun and cool spaces. But you said back in 2012, you started mining. But what was your first um, introduction into cryptocurrency and blockchain? My first introduction was... Um, Let's have a look. Okay, so I found out about crypto randomly. Then I used some faucets and I then had to get a wallet. So I think I've still got my blockchain.info wallet. So I, I don't have access to it. There's only a couple of Satoshi in it. Um, but that was already 2012. So I kind of, wow. you know, it was kind of sitting in the background. And then, you know, I kind of went to some of the meetup groups here in Dublin and met a few very cool guys who kind of introduced me to the scene. Uh, one of the guys was upgrading from Antminer S3, S1s to S3s. So I bought two of him, then bought another two. He helped me hook them up and kind of explain to me, like I was using El, Elegus, Elegius. I never know how to pronounce that. <laughs> yeah. That was the first mining pool that I mined on. Um, and then, yeah, so I got four, mine, four miners. Uh, I was mining away then. Let's just say they kept the apartment warm for a winter. Um, <laughs> which is, uh, you know, my wife didn't mind it as well. You know, I didn't really keep any of the crypto, but I kind of used it to learn. You know, so learns about wallets, learns about mining. Um, I actually hacked my at Miner S1 so it could kind of mine across seven or eight pools at the same time. Nice. And I found some Bitcoin talk threads that I kind of adapted. Um, and yeah, and then I kind of set up at the same time BitcoinsInIreland.com, which is going a bit longer than the company is. And that was really just for me to kind of write about my experience. Right in video game in video games, I wrote quite a lot in terms of there wasn't really anyone covering the scene, so I'd be pretty well known in Ireland from that point of view because I've published reports on the industry. We've done a big map of the games industry across Ireland. I pump out the the sales estimates every year as well, 
Um, so I kind of took that approach in crypto to kind of educate myself and, you know, learn how exchanges work and learn how mining works. And, you know, I did try a few dice sites and a few things like that as well. Some of the provably fair stuff that was there. And um, yeah, so, you know, it was kind of like a, a broad introduction into the scene. Um, <laughs> oh, definitely. Get, like, like the Dublin Bitcoin Dublin meetup group gets all of his credit for kind of introducing me because they, you know, it was, went along, they had a few talks, lots of beers. Yeah. And, um, you know, hey, through beers that, and you know, beers and Bitcoin sounds like a really good uh, collaboration to like just yeah. learn and be immersed into the into the field. So I, I, I would say that one amazing that you were able to get in that early in 2012. Geez, like it was definitely not on my radar at that point, but you're able to learn so much and it definitely gave you the edge to be able to adapt you know, your career and what you're doing in marketing and, and exposing people and educating people in the space uh, and, and trying to be able to bring businesses into it. And so if I'm not mistaken, like that's how you started, you know, Bitcoin marketing team and a couple yep. of your other companies. So can you tell me a little bit more about um, your company and uh, when you started it and how everything's been going? Yeah, sure. So uh, we started it in August 2014. I just turned five this year there as well. Um, and I suppose the, the reason why was because I spotted an opportunity. Um, at the time, what I could see was, okay, you know, there's a lot of parallels between this and video games. I'm always going to refer back to it because that's my background, but no problem. <laughs> you know, video games have a console life cycle of five years or 10 years. I saw crypto having a life cycle of a year and a half. So every year and a half, you're going to see, you know, the technology gets better down. You know, things get better, people build some things on it, and then kind of the next generation of stuff comes through. Um, so at the time, the opportunity that I saw was, uh, you know, there was lots of crypto startups coming, number one. And, you know, they were followed by waves and waves and waves of other companies. Uh, you know, there's very few people in the crypto space who had marketing in crypto because it was so new. <laughs> no one was doing this. Yeah. And anyone who did was in a job. And if they were in a job, they were off the market. You know, they might kind of move between companies there. So any of the experienced crypto marketing people were tied up and all these other companies were underserved that were coming through. So uh, that's basically where we set up. You know, we position ourselves like, you know, the scene here in Ireland for crypto is quite small. You know, I've always worked in an international basis. So that's why we kind of took an international focus first. Right. Um, and went from there, you know, our first... Uh, Clients in the crypto space was a mining pool that's now gone. We then got a European Bitcoin exchange. Then we worked with a gambling company doing some research. And, you know, one thing led to the other. We got one client and then they gave us a reference for the next job and the next job and the next job. And that's kind of the way it works. We've worked on about 30 projects now over the years. Wow. Um, Big portfolio. Yeah. About 10 of them were ICOs between 2017 and 2018. They raised about 110 million between them. Jeez. Um, so, yeah. And, uh, you know, there's been a mix of everything. I mean, like we've worked with, you know, some of the companies that we've worked with, we're kind of doing services. Like there's one who was doing like zero confirmation transactions um, to kind of speed up the checkout process in e-commerce. Uh, we'd won a couple that were selling data, a few people doing B2B. Um, like one of our main clients is Salt Lending. We've okay. been working with them for like two and a half years as they're bringing their kind of crypto lending platform to market. So that's, that's going from strength to strength. Um, and yeah, we've worked with a couple of exchanges and a few of the random things in between as they've kind of come up. So, uh, we like to say we have an eclectic mix of clients. Like we've turned down a lot of work though as well, because we, we do kind of maintain a standard. So if there's anything particularly shady or anything that kind of, you know, if we get butterflies about something, we say no. Right. If there's something that's dodgy about it. And trust me, we've heard some really, really, really dodgy pitches over the years. Oh, I believe it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah. So, I mean, we're pretty selective as to who we work with because, you know, see, we've got a reputation and you've only got one reputation in this industry. Um, you know, and outside of crypto, I've got a reputation to maintain here. So we've just been pretty selective as to who we work with. But uh, no, it's panned out pretty well. You know, not all the projects are still going. I think that's kind of just the nature of the crypto industry that's there. Um, you know, but there's a few of them that are still going strong. And, uh, you know, the current guys that we're working with, you know, it's great kind of working, you know, taking a product and being able to work with it from kind of concept through the actual product development cycle and then, you know, helping it grow. 
Oh, absolutely. And I mean, even on those, on those lines, I, you know, you say you've worked with over 30, 30 companies and there's, they, they all have their own unique problems that they're solving and their own unique uh, solutions to, you know, creating whatever platforms or a uh, unique situation that they're, they, they're building their product for. Right. So how do yeah. you like collectively decide like, okay, here is our plan to attack this particular problem. So I know, of course, each one's unique, but like, what are some ways that y'all have been able to reach the audience or pre- create the branding and the messaging uh, for the companies that you've been able to serve? Sure. So um, as I said, like we, we've adapted kind of many of the, the approaches that we had in launching a video game um, to do this. So, you know, the first thing is helping build out a proper strategy doing research, doing competitive analysis, uh, you know, looking at the products, you know, not every product has a market. You know, a, a lot of the products in the crypto space are trying to build for a market that might be here in five years, but it's not necessarily here right now. Correct. Um, you know, so sometimes people are just too early to a market or they're trying to, you know, they, they're building like a, a market for a million people, but there's only 20,000 people who are there. You know, so a lot of it is kind of managing expectations from that point of view. Right. Um, you know, getting the website built, getting the content there, you know, making sure that people are fully transparent, like trust is a big amount element of it as well. So you need to be very forthright with who's involved with the team, who's involved with the company, where that comes in, because, you know, people like to understand who they're working with. Um, you know, getting good, solid SEO uh, is really important as well. Um, yes. And kind of building on that then as well, like, you know, localization is really important. Like there's about 12... Like the English internet's only about 40% of the internet. Um, you know, hmm. and there is all the other languages, like you've got Spanish, you've got Russian, you've got French, you've got German, you've got Arabic, you've got Chinese, Japanese, Korean, uh, you know, and then some of the other European languages, you know, positioning yourself in each of those markets, you know, English is very competitive, but it's often less competitive in German. For gotcha. instance, we're in French, you know, so by kind of, Positioning yourselves in each of those markets, they all bring in something which helps overall increase the numbers. Um, also, you know, we spend a lot of time working with clients. And again, from our background in video games, uh, I kind of ended up specializing in designing uh, tracking and accreditation systems. So this is really for measuring marketing and communications and advertising. So we have a, a technology or sorry, a, a technique in a methodology that we use. And we've applied this to like four or five games. We've applied it to, you know, a ton of the ICOs that we worked on. We've applied it to a number of the crypto companies that we've worked with and then non-crypto ones as well. And that works equally well across them as well. You know, and that's really been able, you know, once we get it set up properly, it lets us measure good, bad and the ugly. You know, so we have that in there. We right. can kind of map out a conversion funnel. You know, some of the, the products that we're working with are very complex. Like I'm sure you've signed up for like an exchange. You know, you've got to hit the website, register, activate your email, you know, fill in information about you, probably go through KYC mm-hmm. uh, and then do all that stuff. You know, there's maybe five or six steps before you can actually use the product and generate sales. So our technique and the methodology that we use really helps you map out all of those steps against right. uh, the, the traffic sources that they're coming from, whether it's a blog, whether it's social media, whether it's organic whether it's advertising and especially in advertising, it's being able to measure it very granularly because you might be advertising on a thousand keywords, but there's only 200 of them that are generating leads. But then out of those 200, there might only be 50 of them that are generating leads that are going through the funnel end to end and actually generating sales. And once you have that information, you can kind of reverse engineer your marketing and really focus your budget on those safe bets to a certain extent there as well. And that's really how you know, we take that approach because once you know that these are the traffic sources that are bringing in your leads that are actually doing what you want, you can concentrate your budget on them and scale them up as best as you can. This is extremely smart and needed. And you, you spoke on a lot of good things here where you have to be able to quantify your data that's coming in. Like it, it, you're just throwing money at something. If you can't one, be able to understand like, what are you trying to accomplish? Having like actual attainable goals and then being able to measure them. And so uh, the fact that y'all have a technique in place to do both of those and, and more is extremely important and, and awesome that y'all are doing that. And, and on that note, I mean, there's a lot of companies and, and listeners that are um, 
listening to this show that have their own crypto companies and mm-hmm. are aspire to make their own and are, are even as they're growing their own communities uh, to educate people in the crypto space, you know, marketing is a really, really big and important and crucial part, I believe, of, of the business. It's, it's how people are going to find you. It's how people are going to know you exist and then want to stay. Of course, you have to create your own content, your product or whatever to, to make them stay and want to use it, but you have to first grab their attention. So like how crucial would you say uh, marketing is to the success of a company? Okay. You always are going to have those outliers who just, they just get the timing right. This is kind of like your angry birds on your iPhone where they're kind of the right product for the right time and they just kind of take a life of their own, you know, but that's kind of where things go viral. You can't really plan for that. Yeah. You can be lucky, you know, and you can kind of do very, very, very well with that. Um, you know, but really marketing is really important. Like you come back to the measuring, like I'm classically trained, I'm qualified in, in not in digital marketing because they didn't have digital marketing when I was uh, doing university, you know, so I very much was trained in classical marketing. And one of the big elements of that is that things are measurable, quantifiable, and that you can actually understand what's going on. So with, uh, you know, in the crypto space, you know, the first thing is to have a strategy. Like we've worked, we've, we've had so many projects that have come to, come into us and they're doing bits and pieces. Like they might have a bit of social, they might have this, but they don't necessarily have a plan for the whole thing. And the plan's really important for a few reasons because, you know, you've got lots of different people involved. You know, many of the, many of the times that we're working with companies, you've got the core team, you've got the development team, you've got management teams, you might have community managers, you might have a PR agency, you've got marketing, and then you've got advertising. And if all of them are just doing their own thing, you know, you're not really kind of getting a synergy. But if everyone's working together, they all have the same view, they have the same goals, and they're working towards the same thing for the company, you know, that's very powerful. Right. You know, when we're measured, like, you know, with the approach that we can do, we can measure, you know, how good a community manager is because we can see, you know, their activities because we've got them tagged a certain way, are bringing in a certain type of user, advertising is bringing in other types of users. You've got your organic baseline that's kind of taken away because they're not measured. And then you can see your spikes in PR. So, you know, you can see, okay, well, we did a big PR boost. And then you see, right, well, our baseline was a certain amount and that spiked for six days. You know, the advertising went up by 20 or 30% as well because you had that ready at the same time. But then that tapers down and, you know, you have growth because, you know, the level that you had before and the level that you had after has kind of gone up. So that's how it works over time. So um, the, you know, it, it's really having that, you know, the, the tracking approach that we've taken as well, we're probably a bit more conservative than some people. Um, and again, this is just, you know, when we're spending budget for clients, you know, we're treating the money as if it was our own. You know, marketing budgets are a finite thing. Yep. Uh, lots of people have lots of, you know, time and effort. But when you have a marketing budget, if it's gone, it's gone. And if you blow that really quickly on campaigns that don't work, you know, and that's one of the reasons that, uh, you know, we wouldn't necessarily have invested too strongly with, say, influencers because it was very hard to measure them. And a lot of them really didn't bring in a lot uh, over time. You know, right. some, of, some did really, really, really well. I'm not going to say all of them are bad, but you know, a, a very small minority of them did really, really, really well. And then a lot of them, it wasn't worth the money. You know, so being able to understand that, you know, being able to launch an advertising campaign you know, with some of our current clients, we might have started off advertising on 12 different advertising networks. You know, but after the first month or after the first two or three weeks, we could see, okay, this network is bringing in nothing. You know, so instead of continuing to spend there, we take that money and we move it to one of the other ones that is and whittle it down and whittle it down. You know, so in the end, you might be finding that you're advertising on four different networks. You know, you're not advertising in every single one of the websites within those networks. You might be focused only on 20 or 30 websites there. And you've got a very kind of tailored, you know, measurable, you're generating a decent return, decent numbers. Um, you know, there is the kind of Coinbase example where you have a lot of money and you blow a load of money very quickly early on to scale up, you know, and there's only so many companies in the industry who can do that, you know, and Coinbase did that very, very, very early on, you know, they were kind of given 50 or hundred dollars for people to sign up to their accounts and they've just positioned themselves as one of the biggest companies, you know, but they spent tens and tens and tens of millions to get to that point. Right. It's, Um, it's a short term trade off of we're going to spend money to scale up, but like, I mean, (laughs) it paid off just like you said. But I mean, if you come back to a small scale company, you know, this is, it's really a case of just looking at what you, what you can do. You know, you can do a huge amount with your own resources. And I, I learned very, very, very early on in my career that it, a good marketing manager 
spending money is the last thing he will do or she will do. Yeah. You know, so that there's all of these things that you can do first that are more time and effort based, you know, getting your website right, getting it, the, getting the SEO right, getting your community management right, getting your marketing automation right, getting your funnel right. You know, and coming back to the funnel, like that's, that's usually the biggest stumbling block that we, were, that we find when we're working on projects. Because a development team, you know, they might have a really cool product, but, you know, getting into that product is a problem. Now, we're, we're going to be talking at San Francisco Blockchain Week uh, next week or on the 31st or the 1st of November. I'm not sure which day I'm doing quite just Yeah, yet. that's next week. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, and one of the examples that we're going to be giving at that is, you know, one of our clients had a very complex seven step conversion funnel, you know, and you might have a thousand people coming in, you might be losing a few percent at step one, but in this case, they were losing something like 40% at step two. And then they were losing another couple of percent at step three and step four, but at step five, they were losing another 40%. You know, so by us being able to identify that that was the problems, we could go back, work with their team, get them to re-engineer the funnel. And then, you know, all the subsequent leads, the, you know, the, the, the throughput kind of increased about 40 or 50%, but then their sales also went up by about 30 or 40% as well, because, you know, for the same traffic, for the same spend that they were dumping into that funnel, you know, we improved that just to make sure that it was as smooth as it was for people, you know, and that's, that's really the, the key thing. You know, if you can't measure what's wrong, you can't. Now I can give you some great examples from video games. <laughs> <laughs> Go you know, for it. The approach. So like, there's one particular game we worked with and it was kind of like this little Zelda meets Golden Axe Korean MMO. And, um, you know, so we had a few things. So like, firstly, we'd have to get people to register and then download like six gigs and we couldn't track how many people had downloaded, but we could track that they logged in. You know, so we could see there, number one, you know, we're only ever going to get about 50, 60% of people who registered to log into the game. But then through the game, you know, the first things that they would do is they'd have to set up their character. We might lose 20% during character creation. So we got them to re-engineer that. The second thing was then, you know, when people get into a game, they'd have to play the game. You know, so the average play session was about three hours. You might get to level eight. And we could see that there's a big drop out there. So we got them to re-engineer that then as well. Now, in this particular game, we found a few interesting things. Like The game kind of monetized at level 20. But what we found was through our marketing reports that we were losing like 70% of people between level 16 and level 17. Hmm. Now, what actually transpired when we identified that, we're like, okay, this is a major problem because you know, it's sitting right before when people spend and we're losing such a huge amount of people at this point here. And what it actually boiled down to was that there was one quest that you had to complete where he told you to go somewhere and kill someone and come back to him. But when you went there, it had been lost in translation because in Korean, it had gone from Korean to Google Translate English, from Google Translate English to, you know, us in Dublin, you know, we kind of translated what we had and then it got translated into French and German. But that error passed all the way through. Now, in the end, once we found the problem and we actually played through the game together, we got to that point and it's like, actually, you have to go somebody, somewhere else and kill a boss, pick up something, drop it to somebody else and come back. And we were able to patch that game. And once we fixed that individual problem, then we were able to, uh, you, know, you know, we're having 2% dropout instead of 70% dropout there as well. You know, so that's in, in video games, you know, that's, that's the same methodology in kind of finding that problem with the video game that we did find in the, in the conversion funnel for a blockchain project. Yeah. No, I mean, that's a really great <laughs> real life example and one that can be like transcribed and like cross over to pretty much any like business. Like it's, it's, yeah. it's all about, can you identify what the problems are? Then how do you fix them to then get you to the next point? So you can get you all the way down. Like you said earlier, the funnel, the funnel yeah. of where you're ultimately trying to bring your customer. And the other thing is like the data doesn't lie. You know, analytics can underreport, you know, and really having your own database set up to properly record these things is really, really, really important. You know, you have to rely on your own data set because you can reconcile against that and you can measure the problems. Now, also, the other thing is, you know, when you do find a problem, it's being able to work with it. You know, me going up to a, a company that we're working with and saying, look, you have a major problem here and here is not me complaining about your product. It's me informing you, you know, you're spending all this time and money you know, building your product and building your platform. But, you know, you've, you've literally got a giant bottleneck here at the start coming in. 
you know, so we're spending all this money or in some cases when we find the problem, we'll actually stop marketing until they fix that problem there because it just doesn't make sense. I mean, if you want to burn money, you can, right? you know, but, you know, if you're really focused on, you know, you have a tight budget, you need that budget to generate users, to generate revenues, and then you can use that then to fund everything else. Like that's key, you know, and being able to work with people. The great thing about developers is if they can see the data there and there's a problem, and you can kind of work with them to find out what the problem is and let them come to a solution. That's great because, you know, you have all the information and if they deploy a change and they patch, you know, they, they might put out a, a deployment on a certain date, the data tells you if it's working or not. You know, right. with the example from the blockchain company, like, you know, they had a problem that was consistently, they were losing 40 odd percent of people. And then the day that they deployed that, you know, there was kind of a, the numbers kind of increased a bit. But then after that, they steadily stayed like 30, 40% better. You know, and that's great when you're working with the developer because we can say, look, we found a problem. You fixed it. Here's the data to show that the improvement that you put in is actually working. And the thing is, it's maintaining because this, you know, your level has gone up from losing 40% to losing 20% consistently. You know, and then that you can then do the maths then to translate that into sales and revenues further on. You know, it's the opportunity cost in economics. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, you know, it's really, you know, the first funnel that you ever will build is probably going to be the worst one that you're ever going to do, but right. setting up the information, setting up that data so that you can actually properly measure it and quantify it and use that information, uh, to improve your own platform. Like that's, 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 what's really, really, really key, you know? And when we've spoken to a lot of clients as well, like I know that lots of different people do different things in the crypto space. But there seems to be very few people who are really taking that sort of approach. And I suppose the only reason that we have that approach is because we worked in video games before. You know, I'd be spending a quarter of a million dollars a month on marketing and video games. So, you know, that was a, a lot of money to be responsible for, especially Definitely. when you're throwing it into something that's broken. So there was a lot more incentive. But we've been able to kind of take all those learnings from, I think we spent like 10 million euros, so what, $11 million on marketing those video games. And then we apply that knowledge to every single crypto project that we work with. Which is incredible because, I mean, you, you have the historical data and the budget to be able to see like what can work and what happens quickly when you're able to throw smart money behind a, a project. So um, kudos to you for, you know, doing that and, and having a strategy and game plan to like one be able to help people in this space because there's a ton of people in this space that definitely uh, could could use the help in the marketing and also under identifying how to properly properly set everything up. So um, I appreciate you for dropping so much knowledge on us today. But I have another question before I ask you for your final thought, and that's you know what are some other things that are going on in the crypto space that uh, crypto and blockchain space that you are keeping an eye on. Uh, well, it's not the price. I kind of made a decision a long time ago that I wouldn't let the price stress me out. Um, <laughs> Which is I important. Think, well, it, it's important from certain points of view. You know, obviously, okay, it's it's very important. From some, well, important some not to stress view. you out. That's what I meant. <laughs> yeah. You know, you shouldn't be losing sleep over it. Um, I mean, as I said, like the blo blockchain as a platform I think as time goes on, the best pr blockchain projects, you won't really know that blockchain is part of it. And I'm kind of going to separate, say, the cryptocurrency elements of it from the blockchain because blockchain has lots of different applications for it that you can use. You know, and you're going to have some very, very, very good projects and products and services that are coming out that are using blockchain and distributed ledger at its core. Now, on the other side there, you've got cryptocurrency and wallets. You know, they are still very complex. You know, I'm very keen to see how they develop. You know, I'm a big fan of Trezor, you know, the way that they're going. Um, but they're still very, 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 very complicated because people have to worry about private keys and addresses and all these different things there. Right. You know, so the, you know, so for blockchain, there's lots of applications. There's many, many, many areas that it can come into to kind of improve processes and speed things up and take out middlemen and all these other things that are there as well. Um, but it's really a case of just overcomplicating, you know, sometimes it can scare people off. Some pe sometimes it can scare people. Crypto still has a bad rep. You know, beforehand it was dark market stuff. Then you'd ICOs that kind of went bad. 
and you know, there's all these other things that are coming through there as well. You know, but when I when I set out in crypto, like we said, look, this is a 10 year play for us. You know, and we're halfway through now. You know, where we are now when we started in 2014 versus where we're going to be in 2024 are very, very, very different places. You know, and you've seen the whole ecosystem develop. You had originally you have the uh, like the Bitcoin blockchain. You know, and that showed certain things. Then you had the Ethereum blockchain come up that kind of expanded on that. And then you've all the token derivatives. But, you, you know, the really kind of core thing, like the jump from PlayStation 1 to PlayStation 2 between Bitcoin and Ethereum was smart contracts because they enabled right. all these other things to be built on top of them. Now, what's going to come next? You know, is it Lightning Network? Is it any of those things? Okay, all they're really doing is kind of speeding up the blockchain. Um, you know, but it's very hard to see where this industry is going to go. But like one thing I know for sure is it's definitely going there. You've got so much, so many companies that are interested in it. You've got so many different types of applications that can use it. Um, you know, so that's why the technology is so fascinating to me, you know? So it's, oh, absolutely. it's very interesting to see, you know, when I got my free Bitcoin faucets back in the day, you know, did I think it would turn into a career? No, but um, <laughs> it has and it's been amazing. I'm sure it's been an absolutely roller coaster ride, but uh, absolutely worth being a part of. And I think you had a really great uh, video game analogy comparing, you know, from the jump from Bitcoin blockchain network to Ethereum's from like PlayStation, PlayStation 2. Big jump, but still very early. I mean, the fact that we're at, you know, all the way to PlayStation 4, about to be PlayStation 5 that's about to come out, it's just, we're still so early. And just like you said, with, the the ten year like jumps like twenty twenty four there's going to be just so much more in the market so much money more money in the market more developed projects and just so much more resources so I, I definitely agree with that sentiment so uh, yeah, and you ha- you have to go through all of these failed projects as well you know, oh definitely you think back to you know I kind of grew up you know late teenagers early twenties through the whole dot com bubble you know and there was so many companies that came through at that point you know there's only a few of them still around. You know, but the, you know, a lot of them had left a mark because they, you know, they pioneered different things. They tried different things. They might not have been successful at the time, you know, like especially the e-commerce stuff, because back in the day, like credit cards were very hard to get or, you know, it was a big, 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 big barrier to entry. Um, You know, but that's, you know, that's really where I see like blockchain is starting to stabilize now because people are familiar with it. People understand how the technology works. The hardware is there. The processes are there. You know, you've got all these different tools that you can use to to kind of simplify it. And really, you know, every year or two that comes along, like people are going to start building and building and building and building, you know, and building on the best things of the previous ones. You know, and also, again, coming back to video games, like the best video games didn't necessarily try something new. What they did was they thought, you know, this is something that came before us. We thought that this was really cool. We're going to give our own flavor to it and we're going to make something brilliant on top of that. And the best products are really going to look back, take the best different elements from all these other projects that came on, bring it all together into a package and make it work. You know, and it's really a case of just, you know, picking the right product, picking the right market, picking the right thing. You know, some areas are really, really, really competitive. Like there's so many exchanges out these days. There's so many wallets out these days here. But you know, there's definitely, you know, we've only kind of seen the tip of the iceberg when it comes to, you know, how this technology can actually be applied into, into different areas. Absolutely. Absolutely. And wow, Jamie, thank you so much, man. You've dropped a ton of amazing knowledge on everyone who's been listening today. But before you go, can you just give us a final thought that you want to leave with all the listeners? Hmm. Okay. Uh, if you're looking for a career in crypto, um, it's definitely worth a punt. <laughs> um, like, especially for like someone like me, you know, I'm living in a country that we don't necessarily, it's not the biggest country on earth. You know, we punch above our weight in lots of different areas, but you know, by getting into the crypto industry for a career, it's enabled me to work worldwide. You know, we've had clients from California to New Zealand and a lot of countries in between across like four continents. You know, we've got the chance to work with some amazing projects. We've got to work with some mediocre projects. We've got to work with some amazing people. We've got to work with some average people, but we've learned every single project that we've worked on. And, you know, you're only going to get your experience. So, you know, I do have friends and all that who are saying, okay, well, 
you know, should I get into crypto? And I've always got one good example. There's a friend of mine. She got her real estate exams from day trading crypto. You know, so she invested a little bit of money into that. She really, really, really learned how it worked. And she took the money and the crypto that she earned from that and she invested in herself. She got better qualified and it's enabled her to kind of step up her career. So that's kind of my uh, my final thought. Which is a great one to leave on. And uh, I definitely appreciate you saying that. And there, there's just a world of, and a plethora of opportunities and a, a, a amazing network internationally that you can go and meet a lot of amazing people working on great projects that you can plug in and get really passionate about. So again, everyone listening, uh, Jamie McCormick is here with me. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed our conversation. What are some different ways people can connect with you? Uh, BitcoinMarketingTeam.com, probably the best way. Um, if anyone's going to be at San Francisco, we're going to have a booth there and I'm going to be doing a talk on the industry stage. And then I'm going to be doing a breakout session where we're kind of going into a bit more detail uh, on that. And uh, it's uh, Dublin Jammers on Twitter, although I don't use Twitter a huge amount, but you can get me on that. But yeah, BitcoinMarketingTeam.com, probably the best place to get in touch with this. Perfect. Well, again, Jamie, thank you so much for, for joining us today and for everyone listening. Stay Cryptocurrent. Hi, everyone. Thanks for listening to another episode of Cryptocurrent. For more information on this episode and all of our episodes, please visit us at www.crypto-current.co. Stay up to date with the latest news in cryptocurrency. You'll receive daily emails Monday through Friday that are personalized and curated content specific to you and your interest, powered by artificial intelligence. Are you an accredited investor looking to invest in cryptocurrency? Crescent City Capital can help. Go to crescentcitycapital.com for more information. If you're finding value in our content, please take five minutes to leave a five-star review and a great comment. Also, please make sure to share this podcast with others. Hello, everyone. I hope you're enjoying the quality of this podcast. I can only thank my amazing producer, Andrew DeRitter, with DeRitter Productions, who has put this together. If you have any podcast, visual, or video needs, please go to deritterproductions.com. That's D-E-R-I-T-T-E-R productions.com. This has been another episode of Crypto Current, bringing you one step closer to becoming a crypto and blockchain aficionado. We look forward to giving you the latest in crypto news and analyses next week. Stay Crypto Current. Please use available exits now.